Hey my fellow aviators, welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 IFR training video. In this video we're going to be doing training leading up to the instrument rating check ride. In the previous video we just did a VOR and we see we got an A on that one. So now we're going to do the RNAV basics. And much like a real aircraft, this is uh, the training that you're going to see here in the video is going to be highly applicable which is why I strongly recommend that anyone working on an instrument rating supplement their training using Microsoft Flight Simulator. So let's go ahead and get into it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the autopilot. Help. The VOR system is a classic Heading. for navigating via instruments, on. but modern technology has opened the door for new navigation tools. Our flight plan is made of multiple GPS waypoints. We can use those to guide us when we can't count on visibility. For this lesson, we're going to follow a similar trajectory as in the VOR tutorial, flying over Sumberg Airport while maintaining an altitude of 4,000 feet. The system looks very similar to the VOR on the avionics, we'll use the CDI. That's the pink arrow and bar on the HSI. Looking at our flight plan, we can see that we're supposed to arrive at the waypoint on a heading of 170. The CDI shows us if we are on our selected course. We've deviated on purpose so that you can see how to catch up to your intended trajectory. Just like with VOR, the gap between the bar and the CDI arrow shows us the direction that we need to head towards to catch up to our course. The bar is currently over to the right, so keep flying on this heading and wait for the CDI bar to start moving towards the middle. Here it comes, now make a left turn onto heading 170. So much like the previous lesson, you can see that I armed nav mode. Nav has captured the uh, track, it's turned into GPS mode, that causes the aircraft to turn as long as your autopilot's on, which in this case you can see that it is mighty green AP. And you can see it's flying us outside these boxes a little bit, so I suspect we're going to get the same crappy score that we did in the VOR lesson. Um, and then I'll show you the workaround for wanting Great. to get now a better the score. CDI bar centered and it'll take us to the waypoint. In Microsoft Flight Sim, but this is the way I'm doing it now is the way you would do it in an actual aircraft. And this right here, by the way, is your disk. So right now, we're going from this location to FPL. Here, we'll see if we can zoom in a little bit. FPL 00 to FPL 001, that's the next waypoint in our flight plan, which you can see over here in the MFD. It shows here that we're 4.8 miles away, same information here, now 4.7 miles on a bearing of 172, which you can see here is also our heading, 172. And that's the direct track of 171, so probably the difference between that and that is uh, wind correction, more than likely. So over here on the MFD, you can see this is our aircraft here. This is where we're going. Still have about 3.6 nautical miles to go. So if you happen to be training in an aircraft with a G1000 in it, which is the instrumentation you're looking at here in R172, the G1000 in Microsoft Flight Sim is a highly accurate replication of the real thing. And so I would definitely encourage you to do as much practice as you can in Microsoft Flight Simulator while you're working on your instrument rating. It was something that I made extensive use of and I uh, was able to get my instrument rating in just three weeks as a result of that fact. So it says we're happy here with keeping our CDI centered, which is no, no great surprise because the navigation mode of our autopilot is doing that for us.
And we're now just a mile and a half or so nautical miles away from this particular fix that you can see in our flight plan. We're getting close to the waypoint now. The CDI indications might become erratic or disappear when reaching a GPS waypoint, but this is normal. Keep flying straight ahead on heading 170 for a couple of miles. So what I've done now is I've put the heading bug in 170 and I'm putting it back in heading mode. Because he wants us to fly straight, he said, for a couple of miles. Continue the same trajectory. So now, GPS mode has got another waypoint, which apparently we were not supposed to turn towards. Unless there's a bug, which well could be. But nonetheless, we did do what he's verbally told us to do. Just keep on flying on the same trajectory. This may be a good idea. So he said, I think a bit more practice might be a good idea, which is kind of comical because all we did was intercept a GPS track, fly along that track using the autopilot, and then continue on the exact same heading using the heading bug. And let's see what our score is. <laughs> That is comical. So here is, that's how it's done in the real world. Here is the workaround if you're looking to improve your score in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Here's the workaround on how you're going to do that. First of all, go ahead and turn your autopilot on. Heading the VOR system L. is a classic for navigating autopilot is on. but modern technology has opened the door for you new navigation tools. Our flight plan is made of multiple GPS waypoints. I'm going to go we ahead and arm us when we can't count on visibility. the GPS mode. For this lesson, we're going to follow a similar trajectory as in the VOR tutorial, flying over Sumberg Airport while maintaining an altitude of 4,000 feet. The system looks very similar to the VOR on the avionics. We'll use the CDI. That's the pink arrow and bar on the HSI. Looking at our flight plan, we can see that we're supposed to arrive at the waypoint on a heading of 170. The CDI shows us if we are on our selected course. We've deviated on purpose so that you can see how to catch up to your intended trajectory. Just like with VOR, the gap between the bar and the CDI arrow shows us the direction that we need to head towards to catch up to our course. The bar is currently over to the right, so keep flying on this heading and wait for the CDI bar to start moving towards the middle. Here it comes, now make a left turn onto heading 170. Okay, so we're in heading mode. There we are. We've captured it now. The aircraft is now turning left, thanks to nav mode. And I'm going to then also put our heading bug, which is this little dealio right here, at 170. And we'll see if this scores us any better. If you watched my uh, lesson on VORs, you'll notice what real of the scene rather. Great. Now keep the CDI bar centered and it'll take us to the waypoint. If we keep the CDI bar centered, so now I'm going to put it in heading mode. Right there. And I'm going to turn a little bit to the right. You would normally never do this in a real aircraft. This is simply the workaround to try and get a better score in Microsoft Flight Sim. In a real aircraft, you leave it on nav mode and it would fly and keep that needle centered up perfectly. All I'm trying to do now is use the heading knob to choose a heading that will keep the CDI fully centered in an attempt to get a better score out of Microsoft's buggy scoring system. Because there is no way that we should have got such a low score like we did last time Unless the instructions that are verbally given are wonky. Because as you can see here, there's a curve to the left. And our flight plan says we got to turn left to get to runway 27. But he doesn't tell us to do that. So 
slight turn to the left, two clicks, because the needle is just an ever so slightly to the left. One click back to the right. And by the way, if you don't like these pink boxes, there will be a, a, a menu item using the menu key over here or here that you'll be able to turn them off. So still now about 2.3 miles to go. I'll go ahead and pause it here just to get through some of the boring stuff and we'll turn it on in a second. The CDI indications might become erratic or disappear when reaching a GPS waypoint, but this is normal. Keep flying straight ahead on heading 170 for a couple of miles. So he wants 170, so we'll do that. There's heading 170. We're in heading mode on the autopilot at 4,000 feet. And again, I'll, uh, I'll just pause it here and get through some of the boring stuff. This may be a good idea. So same as last time, he's telling me that he thinks a bit more practice might be a good idea, but I can tell you that in, according to real-world standards, we flew that lesson to perfection. Let's see how we scored. Because my, th um, my thinking here is that there's a bug, and it actually wants us to turn left and head towards the runway, despite the fact that the uh, instructor, yeah, is telling us otherwise. So I'm going to fly it again. I'm going to get us right to the point where we turn left and then we'll turn the recording back on and see how we do. All right, guys, here we are again. So now you can see we are about 1.3 nautical miles from the waypoint FPL001. You can see that our track here is going to have us turn left and that is not what the instructor We're tells us to, to do. Waypoint now. The CDI indications might become erratic or disappear when reaching a GPS waypoint, but this is normal. Keep flying straight ahead on heading 170 for a couple of miles. So we tried that already, and it didn't work very well because we got a really lousy score. So we are going to just let it turn us and see if, in fact, this is a bug. Because now we're staying on course according to our flight plan the entire time, contrary to what they told us to do here. But what they told us to do here really didn't work very well in the previous attempt. And I'm sure some of you would like to score well on this particular lesson. So I'm helping you to see if there's a way we can figure out how to do that. So I'll pause it again and get through the boring stuff. Yeah. So again, he's told us that he thinks more practice is a good idea. And let's see how we fared on the score. So our score is pretty much unchanged. Even though we did something completely different, the scoring is unchanged. So uh, this would definitely be a bug because as I mentioned perhaps earlier in this video, intercepting a GPS track and flying along that track is a really simple thing to do in the way that I demonstrated in this particular video. So these numbers here, much like when we did in the VOR video, should be darn near perfect. So thanks a lot Microsoft and <laughs> for, for releasing such a buggy piece of software. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, uh, please do give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. And if you'd like to see future videos about real world aviation or Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, please consider becoming a subscriber to the channel. Thanks very much, everybody. Bye-bye.